Giant Brian, a criminal so despicable they sent him to prison in space. Having been caught speeding in his UFO, Brian and his sidekick, Don Krieg, had been sentenced to 15 years in the USS Anomaly, an interstellar prison specifically designed to hold felons too dangerous to be kept on Earth. With nothing but stars and the cold, dark vacuum of space surrounding him, Brian was just about the furthest he had ever been from freedom. But not even artificial gravity was going to keep him down. Brian was going to escape. As he woke up on his first day in orbit, Brian took in his surroundings. Kind of ironic how he was in space, and yet his room wasn't very spacious at all, thought Brian. But on a more concerning note, once he was finished laughing at his own joke, Brian noticed that every single room in this prison, including his own, was under constant 24-hour surveillance cameras in every room. And, what's more, the entire space station was patrolled by a convoy of robot guards, controlled centrally by some sort of sinister AI system. With computers watching his every move, he had next to no chance of escaping. He desperately needed to find somewhere more private. And, after searching around the space station's labyrinthine corridors, he eventually reached a set of stairs, up which finally was a room with no cameras. As there was no security in this part of the prison, Brian suspected he wouldn't find anything of particular interest, but wait a minute, those were escape pods! Of course! It was perfect! What better way to escape a space prison than in an escape pod? Well, this had all turned out so simple. Brian just had to open this door and he would be out of here in no time, but Brian, we've been through this. You can't be holding the door open and go through it at the same time. That's not how it works. It seemed Brian would need to find an accomplice. How about his fellow inmate Desmond? But apparently Desmond was far too busy forming a band. Maybe Dr. Goopy then? No, there was something he just didn't trust about Dr. Goopy, especially once he started beating him over the head with a broom handle. Brian refused to work with a psychic that was constantly giving him mild head trauma. How about Ophelia? She seemed nice, but Ophelia's second name was Balls, and if Brian was going to be known as the world's greatest escapist, he did not want to be associated with someone named Ophelia Balls. With his options running out, it seemed that, oh god, he was going to have to escape with Don Krieg again. Don Krieg was an infamous criminal just like Brian, but he had a really annoying habit of walking into walls that meant he was far from the ideal sidekick. Despite this, Brian and Don fumbled their way back upstairs, and, working together, in no time, they had reached the escape pods. This was it, the moment of truth, but there were a few major problems. As it turned out, these escape pods had been decommissioned quite some time ago. As such, they had no oxygen and no power. This was a problem as it meant if they boarded the escape pods now, they wouldn't be able to breathe or move. Two things they very much wanted to do. Brian's new mission then was to find an oxygen tank. And if his theory was correct, for this he would need to head to the medical bay. Taking his clothes off, Brian deliberately started a fight with the nearest robot guards. This way, not only did they take him straight to hospital, but once they did so, he was given a spare set of prison clothing. Then, after heading to the library and reading a book called Prison Fashion 101, How to Look Sexy in the Cell, he learnt that by combining his spare uniform with a pot of bleach, he could make himself a rather uncanny nurse's outfit. With this, he was able to enter the back rooms of the hospital without anyone batting an eye. And, as he opened in the medical chest he found a whole load of nothing. There was no oxygen tanks in here at all. Instead, there was just a single banana. Brian headed back to his room disappointed. That was so strange, he could have sworn he was onto something, but um, excuse me, Quasi Quaver. I'm sort of in the middle of something here. Oh my god, he's on top of the desk. Guards! Guards! But seeing as this was Brian's room, when the guards arrived, they attacked him instead. And although he was able to steal a cool new robot outfit during his fight, he was then placed in solitary confinement. By the time Brian had been set free, Quasi Quaver was acting even more Quasi. Now that's the look of a man who's had far too much oxygen, thought Brian. And, lo and behold, when he searched through Quasi Quaver's desk the next day, there it was, an oxygen tank. Now, all Brian needed to escape was some form of power source. Oh, hang on, literally everything in this prison was run by robots. So 
So Brian set about beating up every robot he could find. Surely at least a couple of them ran on AA batteries or something. After punching his way through quite a lot of candidates, some powered by cables, some by solar panels, and some by just pure jealousy, Brian did eventually come into the possession of a couple of batteries. And, combining them together to make an energy module, it was time to blow this space popsicle stand, reconvening with Don Krieg, who I'd just like to point out had done none of the work up to this point. They hauled themselves back past the large metal doors and into the escape pod bay. Then, fixing up their capsule as fast as possible, they bundled inside and launched themselves out into the great beyond. They had done it! Brian and Don were heading back to Earth as free men. Although, this thing was going pretty slow, so it was probably going to take them a while. And speaking of which, shouldn't they be in a bit more of a hurry considering they'd just broken out of prison? Oh god, no! The robot guards had caught up to them, using Brian's very own UFO! Curse you, space rozzers! You'll never take me alive! In a flash, Brian was beamed back into his cell. Oh, crumbs. Why could it never just be simple? Seeing as the space police had commandeered his UFO, which to be fair he stole in the first place, Brian was going to have to find something much, much faster than what was essentially a tin of beans with an engine on the back. Having explored most of the prison at this point though, his only real option was to venture off limits. After scouting around for some time, he made his way to the upper floors and decided to start by snipping his way through an area that was mysteriously fenced off. There must have been a reason this area was so restricted, and just as he broke through to the other side, he found it. Parked at the very top of the station was a space shuttle. Brian could tell just by looking at it that this thing was fast. Those tiny wings, that aerodynamic square design, this was the vehicle he'd been looking for. The only issue now was how to get to it. Running back to his cell, he picked up a screwdriver and then returned to the scene at breakneck pace. Unfastening the vent cover in front of him, he snuck inside and began to snip away at the blockades in place. He would have informed Don Krieg about this plan, but to be honest, Don had a tough time walking through hallways, let alone crawling through vents. Unfortunately, this particular ventilation shaft was so blocked up that before Brian could make his way to the other side, he had missed roll call and the prison was sent into lockdown. There was now no time to lose. Brian snipped with all his might, but oh god, what were those? Some sort of robot dogs? Oh god, this wasn't good! And Brian was knocked unconscious. Okay, Giant Brian wasn't against technology, but this was ridiculous. Robot dogs? What was next? Robot guinea pigs? Anyway, how did they even find him? It must be that insufferable AI. Brian wasn't going to be getting anywhere unless he found a way to shut the whole computer system down. First things first though, he wanted to get his stuff back. And just to prove that he could do it, Brian found another ventilation shaft, crawled through it, and then dropped down on the other side into the contraband room. Although only some of his stuff was there, what he didn't expect to find was a jetpack. And it was with this that Giant Brian's giant brain kicked into gear. Using his incredible mind palace, he scanned his mental map and studied the prison layout. If he remembered correctly, on the far left side of the station was a pair of red staff doors leading to a room marked by bright orange danger signs. The plan was simple, get in that room, cause chaos, shut the whole space prison down, and then jetpack the ever-loving shizzle out of there. Brian wondered where he could track down a red key. Oh look, here comes someone now. Maybe they have it. I mean, I know it's unlikely because it's the first officer we've come across and there's God knows how many officers in here, but there was the red key. Using a moldable putty, Brian crafted a spare key as quickly as possible. Then he returned to the danger signs and headed through the red doors. Brian didn't fear danger, he was the danger. Although even he had to admit this place was a little bit creepy. Before him, sat a huge supercomputer, the mastermind of this whole dystopian facility. But Brian would be manipulated no more. He was no computer scientist, but he did know one thing for sure. There was a big green button on the wall in front of him. A button which probably meant power down. Oh, no, wait, it actually just deactivated the artificial gravity. Oh well, serves the same purpose. With his jetpack strapped tightly to his back, Brian hovered his way past the helpless floating robot guards. This time they could do nothing to stop him, as he boarded the space shuttle, started the engine, and 
and set full thrusters back to planet Earth. Unfortunately, in the time he had been away from Earth, the entire world had become a military dictatorship. Oh my god, Brian just couldn't catch a break, could he?